Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new podcast episode. This week is going to be a very, very special episode for someone who I've wanted to have a long, um, longer form chat with for a while. His name is Tommy Gentleman, and uh, we talk about many, many things, uh, mostly digital marketing, because he's just launched his uh, own digital marketing company. So I wanted to bring him on and have a brief chat about that, but also um, about legacy and what that means. But uh, I will uh, stop talking and I'll let him introduce himself and give him a little bit of uh, more context around who he is and uh, what he actually does. But uh, yeah, if you do enjoy this podcast and do take value from it, I would love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. And also, if you wouldn't mind um, leaving this uh, subscription or, or being subscribed to the channel, it does help the channel grow, does help the channel, um, you know, be seeing bigger and uh, better things in the future. But uh, thank you so much, guys, for the support on the channel lately and uh, enjoy the interview. I'll see you very, very soon. All right. Hey, thanks for having me, Carlton. It's great to be here. My name is Tommy Gentleman, and um, I I run I run a few businesses, uh, which I'm really excited um, to be here talking to you about business and entrepreneurship and marketing today. Because my latest venture is a digital marketing company. Um, I'm very excited to be talking about that with you. Hopefully, you've got a few things lined up. I can see you smiling, so um, so that's cool. My my background I started out in fitness. Fitness was my first calling, my first passion. I'm still very passionate about it. Um, and to this day, I still own a gym, which is currently on. Um, it's currently closed due to the, the current situation that we're in with the pandemic. But uh, we will be opening hopefully soon. Um, I started out and I think I was uh, 19. I went to New Zealand, other side of the world, wanted to go and learn the ropes, get some life experience and everything, and came back with a lot of ideas on how the fitness industry could work and one of the first things i did was open a, a personal training studio in 2007 um sorry 2009 which back then you just you didn't see personal training studios back then um very very new very innovative from there two years on opened a gym and that's the gym that i still currently own um but along those years mate um marketing has been very much a very useful asset um, so I've been learning and studying and implementing digital marketing, offline marketing for over a decade now on my own, essentially trial and error, um, doing lots of different courses and going to different events along the way to gain experience. But then that's what brought me to where I am now, because with all the changes that are going on and um, having built three businesses that had done fairly successfully in terms of what I knew they could do, I just thought, it's time to go all in and, and create the company that I want to create around digital marketing. I have a, a few unique ideas on what I would like to do and how I'd like to do it. And it's exciting. This is the first time that I've ever been on a podcast to talk about that. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to be talking about it a fair bit. Um, so this is really cool. This is really different. Um, and yeah, I, I know that you're aware of some of the other stuff I've done. So I'm not going to talk about myself too much. I'll just kind of give back and to you and you can take the lead. No, definitely. I think I think it's been very interesting because you, um, for those who don't know how how I know Tommy is through, I think a random LinkedIn connection is the I think the best way I can describe it. Um, and and then we sort of just consumed each other's content, and and then we got to chat in, and then I started up the podcast. You know, for me, from lockdown was really something that I, le I leaned into the podcast more so, um, and producing audio content because from a uh, media standpoint, it's very important to have different pillars of your content you know as, as you'll know and as anyone will know who's who's done media content for a longer period of time i've really really lent into the podcast but it's allowed me to sort of have conversations with people like yourself um that i otherwise wouldn't necessarily be able to have you know uh, maybe not in our case but specifically like i've been able to connect with people in america and and things like that through the podcast that would be very problematic otherwise to do um so that's been specifically interested i only briefly talked about your gym being closed um because of covid but has your other kind of ventures or other things had issues with covid or slowed down because of covid or have you seen the opposite very good question the one of the other things that i do is i always like to run my businesses on two lenses one is what the company is capable of doing without me and the other is what my time and my specific output is worth and what that could be used for, right? My skill set, my delivery of my job, essentially. And what I was doing for the last four years um, 
the easiest way to, to describe it is life coaching. I was working with clients with challenges in their personal lives and helping them to overcome those challenges and learn how to think in a more productive and positive way. Um, and I built a good business on that profession, which included events and which included um, courses and which included group coaching as well as um, personal one-to-one -one coaching. Now, I started to purposely slow it down towards the end of 2019. And then at the turn of the year, that's when in my heart, I'd committed to the digital marketing company. And I started studying and really ramping up my ability to focus on that. Um, and what I did, mate, is I, I started to sort of quieten it down. But then when the coronavirus happened, that almost gave me permission to change what it means to me, to make it a complete passion, to make it a complete do not ask for anything in return um, output onto the world. So now when I do my podcasts, when I do my videos, I'm doing it 100, and I don't get me wrong, I really 100% cared before, but there was always going to be an element of business involved with yeah, were you were the where you were looking specifically to turn them eventually into a client. Yeah, or bring them to an event, which I know would help strengthen the way that I could help them long term. Now, this is the difference now. I put out the content, don't ask for anything, don't don't promote anything, just want to help people. It's in my heart to do that. It's in my soul to do that. I can't stop doing that just because it doesn't suit me commercially anymore. This is actually in my personality, it's in my in my in my genetics, and I have to do that. So I'm doing it. Um, the difference now though is that if anyone did come through and say, what you said has really helped. I, need, I will refer them. I will refer them to somebody that I know would take great care of them. Because if I still do that, then it takes my eye off my ball that I'm focusing on here with Digital Marketing Company, which I know still fuels my purpose as a human being. Because when I'm able to help other businesses to amplify their positive messages, then that's going to help people even further it's going to help them build businesses that are successful and have employees and so my output and my purpose still exists but i'm able to reach out to many more people completely free with anything that i can help them with through my content mm -hmm. have you found there's a definite because i imagine with your coaching background there's been kind of this easy transition or easy transition between right i'm going to help you with your like mindset and that kind of thing into them what you should be doing with digital marketing or, or marketing in that respect absolutely until i'm working with a robot that runs it just that runs their company right it'll always be valuable and that's why earlier when i said that i can't remember exact words but basically i do it very differently and i'm very confident about what my company is going to represent and one of the things that I have that I know many other companies or many other um, digital marketers won't have is that high, I'm not blowing smoke up my ass here, but world-class level of coaching skills. And at the core of every business is a human being. So I can help that human being to do their business better. And I can help bring out the best in that human being and therefore the best in their business. So I see it as an absolute correlation and a strength. So for those who don't know that like the knit and grit of what digital marketing is, could you just briefly explain what you, how you, what, what that is to you as a, as a catalyst? What is digital marketing? Yeah, cool. Um, great, great question. What is digital marketing? It's a way to communicate not only to your current existing clients, but with prospects and the wider audiences that you could potentially reach through the means of mainly the internet, social media, um, and various ways to bring attention to your business um, and hopefully then bring that into a system that ends up with a customer in whatever form that business has. So it may be e-commerce, it may be events, it may be services, it may be products, it may be professional services. Um, it, it could be anything. Now, it's such a hot topic because everyone moved online in the last couple of months. People 
are buying things online now that never would have done it before because they never would have even considered it. They would have seen it as risky or complicated. And there's been a huge, huge spike in the amount of online transactions. And now people realize just how easy it is and how safe it is. They probably won't change that behavior back. So that means companies have had a real spike in the amount of potential that they can see now. There's companies that have woken up to the the, the thought of investing in digital marketing rather than the traditional style offline marketing. And to finish the question, um, to give you a conclusion on my answer, the way that I see it, the way that I do it is there's two types. There's the consulting approach, which is where I really get to sit sit side by side with the business owner like a co-pilot for i do i usually do eight weeks where we really go in and optimize on language on the way the systems and processes work on the different forms of media that we can use to make everything as simple as possible and get the job done and then there's the other side of it which is the the done for you service which is which at the moment i'm very small on because i'm only the one guy right but in the future, I will have this company will grow and there'll be other people that will be able to jump in. I'm only like two months in um, to setting up the company. Um, but I'm already taking on these types of clients. And that done for you service is literally the social media ads, running the ads, managing the ads, making sure that we're getting great conversions, making sure the money is being spent properly and really caring about every single pence, every single penny on that ad spend I think a lot of companies that have got comfortable, like I'm here to kind of disrupt it a little bit and shed some light on it because I think a lot of companies have got very comfortable, almost like, do you remember websites used to be really expensive? And then all of a sudden they were like, your mate could do it for you. And then these companies were still charging 12 grand to build these websites. And then someone was like, well, you don't need to do it anymore. It's not as expensive as that. And it's almost like, some forms of social media marketing and advertising that's starting to be a relevant point now because companies are getting a bit lazy they're like yeah you know we'll run your ads for you they're not they're not checking the ads they're not checking the the performance as much as they should be um and so i'm here to bring a, a high level of care to every single penny that's that no that's great to hear because personally i you know i've tried to put from a center to give to give user context and those who may not be listening for the first time today who don't know what I do specifically. I'm a I work with people like yourself who produce ads and really manage those ads, but I normally am the one that creates the ads. So I'm a video videographer by trade, but a content creator in in, in some ways as well. Um and I think it's really important to understand that you can actually do a lot with a, with nothing or, or with a with a little amount if it's done with the right people. Absolutely. In in that respect. I think that's very, very important. But I think that especially now i think there's definitely been a switch in the respect to people understanding that you need to go to where the attention is not necessarily where you may feel you've been told you should yeah. go if that makes sense yep and that's that's what i love about the consulting element of it because i often get a lot of people that come in and straight up saying i need to do facebook ads okay okay what is it that makes you think this is where the coaching kicks in what is it that gives you the impression that you need to do Facebook ads? So like, well, it's a great way to do this, this, and this. So, okay, well, if the end goal is to increase your revenue by X, then what about all those quotes that you're not following up on? Oh, yeah, we, you know, sometimes we don't want to ring people up, and sometimes people say that they're, they didn't get our email, and I'm like, okay, well, that's actually the place to focus on. Because fixing that and making that better will increase your revenue without having to do any of that stuff there. So that's why the consulting is cool because you get to kind of, you get to really help with what people really need rather than what they think they want. And yeah, of course, Facebook ads are an amazing way to advertise, but there is very little point in bringing more people into the funnel um, if the quoting process is flawed. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, like a leak. If you can't get, if you, if you... Yeah, if you can't get the bottom conversion right, then there's no point bringing more people into the top of the funnel because you're still not going to convert. Exactly. So fix the bottom of the funnel first and work your way up. Yeah, a hundred. Yeah. Exactly. But um, but but yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think from from my side, I mean, I don't know. This this is probably years ago for you. I don't know exactly when you did your TED talk, but something I wanted to ask you about um, was your TED talk about legacy. Yeah. Um, and, and having a legacy and what that really means firstly for you and then what that may mean for people who are listening. So could you just sort of briefly explain 
that obviously not ruining the entire TED talk, but I think it's a very, very interesting concept to have. Um, and possibly if you want to um, go through the little story, which you also gave. In- of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's important that people have that context and I'm always very happy to share that. So um, I mentioned I went to New Zealand earlier in this conversation. When I came back, I was on top of the world, had so much energy, so many ideas. Um, and I was very much looking forward to coming home and spending time with my family, in particular, my younger brother. And I had, and I know how many, it was 44 days that I had mucking around with him and really kind of getting to know him as a young adult because he was 13 at the time, nearly 14. And I'd been away for a year and a half. So I hadn't seen that transformation from just being a little kid into sort of a young adult. So very much enjoyed that time and and looking forward to seeing him being around him growing up. Um, But he he suddenly passed away uh, five days before his 14th birthday from a heart condition that was um, unknown and undetectable. It was completely like random and unexpected and and obviously it stopped everything it stopped all ambition it stopped all energy flow it was just horrible and and in the ted talk which um i know that you've asked me specifically about that i make it very clear that this is my story but it's also your story because you've got something too and it doesn't matter what your thing is it doesn't matter how you felt how you felt it doesn't matter the circumstance the feeling is the same. And whatever that moment was for you or anyone listening, everyone's had something where they've gone, all right, I quit. You know, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore because this is awful. Whatever, whatever that, that was, it's very real. And, and actually for me that that's when the awareness of legacy began, because first of all, I started to see his and I started to feel his, I started to see how, I, I spoke at his funeral and there were 800 people in this church and he's 13, you know? And I just remember thinking, um, this is incredible. This is, le- this is legacy. Now this won't stop. This will continue. We set up a charity and that's obviously kept the essence of that legacy alive. And, and as I've kind of, it's 10 years ago now, as I've gone through year to year, it's, evolved in my understanding and I've got a bit older and I've had children and and now you start to understand that legacy is it's what you do with your words it's it's what you say with your words it's what you do with your work and it's the reasons why you do it and operating on those three w's every day creates it because legacy isn't just when you feel like it legacy is all the time it's what you do in your your daily actions and how you you conduct yourself and what you say to people and what you do and um to, to really understand the beauty and opportunity of life, you have to see the darkness and the depth of death. And so that's what the talk is centered around. And the point of like the practical element of the legacy is that, um, you, you know, we all run out of time. We all leave our physical body where we go, who knows, but we all, do that at some point but that isn't the only time we die we die again after somebody thinks about us or speaks of us for the last time and that's i think incredible i mean there's people i'm sure you've got people as well who you admire who are no longer here maybe like hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago they could have lived Um, And you still would draw power and strength from those people as inspiration and as role models and as people who are thinking outside the box and people with history or whatever. That's incredible that that person's legacy, just by doing those three things, their words, their work, and their reasons why, has had that effect on the rest of time and space. It's just, it's just incredible. So that I knew that it was the only thing that I wanted to talk about. I knew it. And when the invitation came along, it was, it was just easy to put that together. No, and I think that's definitely really important, especially if you're in a digital media space, because you're basically, um, the way I see it anyway, is I'm documenting my feelings or, 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 you know, we're talking about, you know, COVID now, but we'll be able to look back on the podcast I did during COVID and getting people's perspectives on how they're dealing with COVID, et cetera, you know, in two years, in three and four and five and six and 10, you know, my kids will be able to do that, et cetera, you know, um, in that respect. So I think, 
I think especially from a, even necessarily not from a marketing perspective in the respect of the short-term marketing perspective, but also from a long-term marketing perspective, from a company perspective as well, I think it's very, very important to have those company values in in content as well, but allow you, because it because content allows you to scale. Because like, for example, if, if I get the same question six times, for example, but I'm and then I make a video answering the question, instead of me having to sit there and write, to you the answer to the question that might be a paragraph i can just link the video so it becomes a time saver in that way as well but also the special moments that i think are really special like for example if you documented the process of you building your digital agency from nothing to crazy level of success which i'm sure it will be um you know that will give people who are looking to build anything doesn't have to be a digital marketing business, but any business, a blueprint, you know, a, 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 okay, Tommy did this. Okay. These are the problems he ran into. This is how he sideswerved it, or this is how he worked around it, you know, in that respect. Do you think that's part of the reason why in, in, in some ways that you're, you're kind of going into the more digital marketing side as well? Yeah. I'll tell you the truth. I got actually excited about starting a company in the pandemic for that reason, for that, for that exact reason, I want to be able to say it in three years. I, I joked with someone, I was like, well, that, well, there's the award acceptance speech done forever. You know, <laughs> well, you know, this, this company was uh, founded in the middle of a pandemic. You know, that that's, I always used to, I always used to envy in a way, but not envy. It was more of a sort of an, an incredible amount of respect, but also like a, yeah, that's so fucking cool. Like someone, when they were saying, oh, you know, we, we, we set this company up in the middle of a recession. I'm like, man, that's just gangster. So I knew that I, I wanted to have that flag to be able to say, look, anything's possible because when everyone else was looking that way and thinking about trying to keep hold of everything that they had and being scared of change, I was going, all right, I'm going to go and look that, I'm going to go over there and look at that, that itch that I've got of passion that I want to scratch and that I know is the thing that's going to help bring the best out of me and everyone else, because that's what was necessary for me. And I, I, my intuition was pulling me towards it and having the space there with, with the coronavirus to be able to actually not be involved in day-to-day -day stuff with the gym, with everything else allowed me to think above the clouds and go, all right, I see it. I can see that how it, how it looks and how it's going to work. No, definitely. I think that's really, really important. I think that businesses that are able to make it through this, whether that's pivoting or whether that's, you know, starting a new business might be as well, um, is going to be in some ways, I hate using the term badge of honor, but, but, but you know what I mean? It's going to be something I think that as a business owner for me specifically as well, will be something I'm very proud of to be able to say that, yeah, this time was hard. Yeah, this time was difficult, but we got through it. We're still, we're still, we're, and especially if you were able to grow through this, that's a huge accomplishment. You know, even if you can just get to the point where you break even, that's great. That's amazing. If you can go one step further and say you even grew your business, that's even better. Yeah, I'd argue even if it didn't work out, because there's a beautiful thing about some of the things that I like. I, for example written in my book and some of the things that I swear by and that I used to say a lot on videos before and they're like even more relevant now one of them is that there's no such thing as failure there's only winning or learning so I'd go as far as to say that having the spuds to actually give it a go now still gives you a shitload of credit and value and stock value with anything that you do in the future anything like sometimes people are scared because it looks like a failure but it's not a failure. It's a massive lesson. And even like someone who, for example, loses their job, they, lo they lost their job in April. It was like, yeah, it ain't going to happen. Sorry, mate, redundant or, you know, see ya. And they thought, oh, I'm going to start my own business. And they gave it a go when everyone else was playing Fortnite and they gave it a go and, and then it didn't work out. When they sit in front of a future employer in a job interview and the future employer reads the thing out and they go, oh, what happened in 2020? And, and they go, they can then either get embarrassed and be like, oh, um, I tried to start a company and you know, um, it didn't work. Or they could go, well, I lost my job. So I thought, 
I'm going to start my own business and see how it goes. And it, it didn't actually work out. But what I learned was that I really want a job doing X, Y, Z, which is why I'm here. I want this job more than anything. And it's also taught me a few lessons that I know that other candidates won't have. It's just, you just got to own everything that you choose to do. No, definitely. And I also think it's one of those things where you can be proud about what you did during lockdown as well, you know, and say, I haven't just sat here and played Fortnite all day. Right. Or, yeah, or, or it, night, it's... It's a, a it's a jokey one, and I've used it a couple of times. But I think people understand it's an attitude. It's an attitude of oh, I can't be bothered, or oh, it's so bad, I'm a victim. It's that that attitude doesn't sit well with me because I can't think like that. I'm immune. I'm immune to that. Like, and that's because of what has happened in my life and how I've managed to turn that into a positive. I just can't wallow it's impossible for me to do that. So it might last half a day or at best it might last a day or two. But after that, mate, I'm like asking questions about what can I do? Not why is this happening? Because why is this happening? It will just bury you. That question will always bury anyone. But what can I do about this will always help you go up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think think it's also about understanding that there's things you can control and there's things you can't control. Like, for example, no one could... There was people who could stop the pandemic, probably, but they, they didn't, or for whatever reason, right? There's no one getting in that debate right now. But the point is, that person wasn't you, right? So you're in this situation, you need to make the most of the every day you have during this time where you can't be doing X, Y, or Z. What are you going to do instead that can still develop you personally? So that might just be something simple. Like, for example, I've taken running more seriously since lockdown, Right. Uh, a lifetime goal of mine has been to run um, run a marathon not necessarily in a race but just run the distance of a marathon right so I'm like right okay no time like the present started training for that that's what I've been doing for the last nice. two months yeah, right you know so it's it's just it's just those things those little things and it's not always necessarily professionally right and, and that's why I use the running example because that's something where I'm like right I can't grow this much professionally at the moment because I haven't necessarily worked out what ways I can do that that's fine but what am I going to do today that's still going to allow me to grow as a human being? You know, whether that's physically or mentally or both um, in that respect as well. And I'm glad you kind of mentioned that as well, because um, I think that a lot of people are going to come into the either the, they're either there or they're going to be in that position in the next couple of months where they're using this time to really reflect, as, as you were saying as well, on, on, on firstly where they are. So it might be they are not made redundant or, they, or they're not, but they may decide to quit the job they're at at that time because they may not feel fulfilled or they may not be happy or or whatever it may be. And then they may decide, right, I want to do this. I want to make this business. I want to make it work. What advice from your experience with starting businesses and, and, you know, creating, going out on your own, basically, um, would you give to those people who are, who have never done it? In the here and now, you've got to be passionate about it. In the short, in the short vision, you have to be passionate about it. It has to be something that you can do when, you, like, any time. Like people whinge about productivity and they say, "Oh, I wish I could be more productive." But there are things that they do that they would do all day if they could, because they absolutely love doing it. It's that you've got to feel like that about what you do. Otherwise, it'll always be a slog, and you'll always be lagging behind. So whatever it is that you're passionate about and that excites you and that lights you up, if you have the opportunity of a break in employment, all right, I'll say that again. If you have the opportunity of a break in employment, then follow what excites you because you can. The safety blanket's been taken away. You can literally go for it. So that's something in the short term that I think from experience has always served me well. And whenever I've got involved with any ventures or any projects or been on any um, involved in any companies as like a, a, a side player that I haven't been passionate about, I've always pulled out of it. I've always thought I can't do it's just too much or there's been problems and it's been too stressful. Um, so that's something that I can share. And then on the bigger pitch of you is you've got to have an exit in mind. You've got to build with the end in mind. So I didn't make that happen with the gym. I just did it because it was what should happen. I was so proud. Yeah, this is the next stage. I'm really passionate about fitness. And I didn't know what was going to happen after five years or six years or whatever. And so there was a point in the business's 
life where there was a difficult patch around five years. And that's because I didn't understand what I was going to do with this thing. Now, like, okay, well, what, you know, what next? Um, and that's when problems start to happen. So build with the end in mind is definitely something to consider as well. Would you say that's more of a, as a goal setting thing or are you kind of in some ways setting it up to possibly sell it on or sell the business or, or, or step away, you personally step away from Yeah, it? any of those things. I think whatever it is, you've got to love it and you've got to be passionate about it, but you've also got, like like having kids, like when they're 18, they're going to grow up and they're going to leave home. You know, I say that figuratively. I know it doesn't always happen like that, but whether they physically leave home or mentally leave home, they're going to leave home, right? They're going to be adults. Um, and you still love them and everything else. And it's still going to be part of your history and part of your legacy. But you've got to be okay with letting go of that parental responsibility. And it kind of similar to a company in a way, because if you don't know what that looks like when you start, whether that's going to be, this is what I'm going to do forever, fine, or I'm going to sell this, or one day I'd like to step back and have other people run it. Okay, great. Or maybe it's, you know, one day I'm going to um, buy a different company and bring it in and start building other areas of the business and move into that area and have somebody run it. Like, you've got to understand what it could look like, but you don't have to know what it is down to a T. You don't have to know that because that will cause too much overwhelm. You just need to understand what the feeling of exit feels like to you so that you're not like chained by it. Yeah. So, and also I think it's important to understand that you're still moving forward. You know, that might not, might not necessarily be financially moving forward because mm. there's lots of time in business where you'll take financial hit after financial hit, especially now out of financial hit, but as long as your business growth and your business overall is getting stronger, so whether that's you developed assets that you didn't have beforehand, yep. or whether that's you developed connections, or you developed, for example, I've developed this podcast. Yeah. Arguably, this will be something that I will continue to do and I will eventually develop more of an audience for as it grows and as I do more of it. But I got a, a head start on that audience growth building process of creating the content because I used the time within lockdown to do so. Definitely, the, it's very important. Uh, mental assets okay. as well. Mental assets as well. If it doesn't work out, if it doesn't work out, there's still so many mental assets. As the operator, as the as the business person, the entrepreneur, whatever you do next, and that's how I feel in a way. I knew that whatever I I knew that whatever I did next was going to be so tight because I'd learn from my mistakes. Because you've already built a, it might not be in the same field, but the 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 basic level of running a business, the like you know the infrastructure of how that actually functions is the same. Yeah. It might be a different medium in which you you know operate in, but the 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 at a base level it's yeah. the same. I built that business as a tw twenty one year old young man who was beautifully naive, full of enthusiasm, but he was hurting. He was hurting. It had only been a year and to go in, into business and then only it had only been two and a half years before opening the gym. And so there was still a lot of, I'm going to do this and throw all my energy into this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it no matter what. And that's admirable, which is why I said beautifully naive, because what I ignored was all rational thinking. And what I ignored was all, what are you going to do about this bit? No, I'll think about that later. I'm doing it. Or what about in five? No, not five years. I don't think about it. I'm doing it, you know, which is a strange one, mate, because you need that. You need that tenacity of, I don't care. I'm doing it. Otherwise, sometimes you never, never do anything. But the one thing I've learned is um, you have to also <laughs> you have to also apply logic, and you have to also know your your numbers, and you have to know what's going to happen, and what what the price increases are going to mean, and you know what what these things are going to do, and you need to know that stuff. But at that time of building that business, I didn't I didn't care about that. I just wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. I think that's I think that's important because if you start with this process of I want to do it 
and you're not going to let anything get in your way of doing it, that will give you enough trajectory to get to a point. But there needs to be a point where then you step back and go, right, where, which direction am I actually going to go in? You know, um, because at the moment I'm just going forward, but I don't necessarily know which way is yeah. forward. And you, and if you run out of gas, there you don't know where the nearest station is either. And you, you just, you disorientated yeah, yeah. and, and it's dangerous. No, definitely. I think, um, yeah, I think, should we talk about content a bit? I think that's, I think that's an interesting crossover. Um, this is going to be very biased because I think I know the answer, but for the listeners who don't know, what would you say is the most important piece of content as in medium of content that people can use for advertising like now? Well, from a practical standpoint, video is also audio. So there's multi-purposing there. People can take the audio from the video and they can use that audio to double back. And also it's like you said, it's historic content. You can repurpose for written articles. These days you can get transcribes done in hours, very accurate transcript transcripts done. So there's practical element to it, a massive practical element. It's literally the top of the tree in terms of practical element. Um, the only thing that trumps that, I think, is having a live event where there's also people in the room that you're benefiting in the room and filming it, and then you're sort of adding another layer to it. Um, but video, practically that, but also with video, especially now, now that the world has warmed to video as a more secure and trusted form of communication, it's the only thing that you can get to know somebody subconsciously as well as consciously with. So you can really start to understand them and you can look at their facial expressions. You can get to understand um, how they think because you can look at their eyes, you can see them. That connection is far more powerful than we, than we think. And that's why video, knowing what I know about how the mind works and the conscious and subconscious correlations that we draw on people when we see them. And that's the key, when we see them, not, not hear them, or read them, see them, is very important. So I encourage a lot of people to make videos. I have a video content creating course that is online, which helps people with things like scripts and structure so that it actually delivers what they're trying to say. And that's because there are a lot of people that aren't that confident at putting themselves on a video, right? You know, this, this is what you do. And I'm sure you've had to have many conversations to encourage people that it's okay to, you know. Um, so video is the one for me, mate. I think the more people that do it, the better, because then it's the one that can do it the best that will get through the noise and bring it on, you know, because that's great for everyone. I think um, it cuts through a lot of shit and it cuts through a lot of wasted time. I think it's also, you know, there's a kind of balancing act, I think, for a videographer perspective anyway, about your service and how you actually help that client create that video as well. It's not necessarily just the video, right? Because I can be amazing at video, but if it's a difficult, like for some reason, I'm with you, the client, but you find it very, very hard to work with me to create the video, you're not going to, you're not going to hire me. You're going to hire someone else, you know? Um, but if it's extremely easy to for you to pitch to me, okay, I want this video to do X, Y, and Z. And then I'm like, right, okay, we could do it this way, this way, or this way. And then we just go and execute that. Then you're more likely to hire me again because that, that, that's what I've been finding. And that's where I've been sort of developing my, another arm of my business has been sort of helping other videographers understand that it's not just about how shiny their gear is, or it's not just how good they can make a video look. That They're important, of course, but you also need to not neglect the service side of it because at the end of the day, you're a service provider. You provide a service, which means the entire process from us having a first email to me handing you a video for you to distribute or me helping you distribute it. The entire process is important from that, that point to that point. And if there's bumps on that road or there's problems or there's, you know, something missed or etc it's not necessarily the medium's fault it's normally the messaging or how it's gone about or how you've done it in the respect to oh why did a video not do well okay let's have a look because it's not the medium it's not videos the problem it's 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 our video if that makes sense um from from my i get that and i think you've got from, to be a director these days as, as well as a videographer as well as a producer and a distributor you have to be a director and from experience of having many people video different projects of mine 
the ones that have been able to lead me and get the best out of me are the ones that are the absolute joy to work with. Like I had a young guy come and work with me, started working with me three years ago. And I, I wanted someone to do some videos. So I offered it out as a, a project, you know, freebie. Come and get some experience. Got this young lad, Jordan, out of college. Um, towards the, well, I, I pretty much, I think I employed him full time for the whole of 2019. And he just videoed everything that we were doing. He just videoed like the events. He videoed behind the scenes stuff. He made little projects with me. And his confidence grew as time went on. But what, what I really loved from him eventually is he got more confident to tell me, oh, what about do that again, but do it like this. You've said this before. And I thought, I thought when you said it like that, that was better. Or I'll oh, do that again because you looked this way and da, da, da. and like that, because I feel so uncomfortable when someone's there to do a video and they're just like, all right, cool, go. You know, they don't say to me, right, oh, this is what, okay, we're going to do it like this because that the light is there and da, da, da. I love that. And that's what, that's a director. Yeah. And I think, I mean, well, I mean, in, in, in like, in, in terminology speak, it's a cinematographer, it's a director, it's a producer, it's, it's everything. But I think at a, at a base level, I think it's important for videographers to, because like, for example, I don't really take on projects now that I'm not passionate about and I can't get fired up about. The reason why is, as you'll, as you'll know as well, I want to make sure I can help that client get really excited, really happy, really energized, really fired up to what they're going to be talking about just before I press record because it changes the performance like that. If 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 I if I hype them up, they're going to do a crazy level of they'll do stuff that they don't even realize they can do and they don't even they forget that I'm filming. In in some cases, they'll forget. They'll just be like the, the you know, they won't necessarily think about it. I think it's one of those things is once you understand that as a videographer, you have a lot of responsibility and a lot of power, right? I, I deliberately put them in that way round because if you don't respect that responsibility as a videographer, it can go, you know, content wise, it can be very difficult. But I think if you understand that you come in with that responsibility and it is part of your responsibility to ensure that your talent is happy, comfortable, and then fired up to do whatever you're doing, I think then you'll get the best content. You've got to free people Personally. up. You got to free different. free people up to feel like they can be creative and not feel embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. But also make it clear to them that, that you know a lot of when I take on a new client, uh, we'll, we'll, we won't even look at a camera first. We'll, we'll spend three weeks not even looking at a camera, and I literally will go look, talk to your phone. We'll just start with their phone, right? It won't even be I come and make anything for them. It will be just getting to them to a point where they're comfortable with having a conversation with themselves, because at the end of the day, that's what a video is you having a conversation with yourself, you know, or possibly one other person, depending. But in that respect, people, um, cause you know, I th I'm sure you'll find, and I'm sure I will find continuously. There's some people who are, I use the term overly skeptic of video. Wow. It's amazing. But is it, what would you say to those people who are slightly more overly skeptical to start doing video to start doing it? Yeah. So what they, they so think, the, uh, 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 the, they're like, oh, why should I do video? It takes up so much of my time. It's really expensive, blah, 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 blah. You, you know, all the, all the kind of barriers which they see is in the way, right? And I just want to premise this by saying video isn't necessarily expensive. It is true that it can get expensive quickly. That's true. But it doesn't have to be expensive, yeah. right? I, yeah, I would, um, I would kindly ask them what it was that was holding them back. What's really, what is really holding you back about doing a video? Because I'm telling you now, it'll only be something that's based on insecurity. Um, that, that's why, because the logic is there. Why do you, what, what's your favorite movie? Well, Lord of the Rings. All right. We'll tell you what, listen to the whole thing instead of watching it and tell me it's still your favorite movie. Like the, the, <laughs> The, the format of the media still like it's the logic is there of like, Oh yeah, cool. Visual stimulation. I get it. Um, but it's because they're insecure. That's all it is. And it's about helping them to overcome that insecurity without being pointy about it. 
without being like, get over yourself, you know, get on the fucking video now. Um, but actually being like, well, I understand that you think those things, but what's the, you know, what's the real reason that you don't want to do this video? Oh, you know, and he's like, okay, I understand that too. But like, what's, what's really holding you back? And then it will come out like, I just think I talk shit or I, I, I don't know how to get my words out or I'm terrified or I look stupid or, you know, and yeah. Yeah. And, and then you can work with that. Because you can go, well, how do you feel when you talk to people face to face? Do you feel do you feel those things when you go and talk to your friends? Or no? All right, well, what's different about that? And then you and then you can start to help them understand that, yeah, all right, it's a video. Yeah, all right, it's weird because there's no one there. But actually, you, you show up this way all the time. And if it's a business thing, Carl, and you just say, Well, how do you feel when a customer walks into the shop? Or how do you feel when da da da? Because it's the same. And then to really strengthen it, you connect. What I do is I connect people to their strongest reason why they would want to do marketing or the strongest reason why they want to get their word out because it will be because they want to do this, this, and this. You go, well, the video will help you do that. And then you bring it all together. So I get it though. Like I, I do empathize with people that have this, this, um, bar the barriers. It's, it's terrifying. I was terrified when I started doing it. I got some old videos, mate, 11, 12 years ago. And, you know, it's, it's tragic. <laughs> we, we all have, those. Yeah. we all have those. Yeah. I mean, like, and that's why I say the clients all the time because people, because, yeah, you know, I don't know if you follow a lot of what I do on my socials, but a lot of, you know, in normal times was like, I'm walking down the street. I'm going to tell my audience, yada, 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 on my phone. Um, what meeting am I going to? Where am I going? What am I doing? Blah, 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 blah. People love it. People love looking at it from like a consumer perspective. They love looking at it. But people go to me and go, how can you, how do you do, how do you do that? And, and I'm like, you realize how long I've been doing video, don't you? Like it's, you're not suddenly going to go from this concept of starting to want to do video to do what I do. That's that it doesn't just go from one to a hundred. It's, it's one of these things where, like, and that's why I say to everyone that starts doing video, do 20 videos, but don't show them to anyone. Literally just sit and record 20 videos to your phone, to, to your webcam, whatever. Then do 20 that you post. Right. Just, just on Facebook, literally just on Facebook. It could be you talking about anything, about the weather, what you did that day, uh, your passion about cats, whatever, right? And then from, because by that point, you've created 40 videos. And at that point, then you can start fine tuning little things like where you're looking, how you come across, whether you're scripting your content, what content do you actually want to create? Why do you want to create it? How do you want to create it, et cetera. But people try and do the whole, I've got to have a script. I've got to do this. I've got to light it. I've got to do that. I've... No, you don't have to do any of that. That will come. Just, just, just back off. Start at the very basic of I'm going to talk to a camera. Full stop. That's it. That's all you have to do. And I think that part of, I don't know whether you found, but I think for me, my job is starting to more become that process as well. And this is why, uh, this comes back to what I was saying earlier about service as well. It's more me helping the client go on a journey from firstly not in some cases firstly not understanding why they should be using video in the first place and how it works for their business and what they're trying to do so that's the first thing and then the second thing is how do they practically do it how do they then feel comfortable with doing it as well um so so that's kind of where my business has gone because when i went became a video i was like oh cool i get to show up with the camera i get cool create cool shit right but it's actually so much more than that. Um, and you, and I think that that's where some videographers end up having some issues sometimes because they don't unnecessarily understand. And as you were saying earlier, you know, nowadays, especially on lower budgets, you end up being the producer, the director, the cinematographer, the videographer, the, in some ways, hair light, hair and lighting and makeup. And is it, you know, you have to learn to do a thousand different things all at the same time and be okay with that as well and i think that's really really important um in, in that respect moving uh, you know moving forward especially as we go into the next stage of covid as well because even hollywood films are going to have to downsize their crews which means sometimes a camera operator will have to be a boom operator and and etc and help with lighting and and, and etc in that you know in that respect at, at that level you know by no means does that mean they're going to go down to one man teams, but it will mean that they'll definitely have to go down to maybe five man teams or six man teams when they would normally be double that, you know, um, from, from, from what I've been reading and what I've been 
um, from the people I know in that in, in that industry who are who are more uh, Hollywood esque, as in heading toward more that way um, in that respect. Who don't do because I personally see it as different in the respect to they're different things. Um, because one's merit more narrative than others, but of course there's some crossover. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's really important to understand firstly as well. Yeah, it is like the the world got really good. Uh, well, the tech got really good in a short space of time. This here, this thing here, is the reason why you and others have to up your game. It's like similar to what we talked about with the website stuff earlier. You can't get lazy in these things anymore because the tech has evolved to a point where you could have like my, I actually was with my son today and he's got a really old iPad, like one of the first like <laughs> iPads. It's like as big as a TV. Um, but, but also really pixelated and rubbish. Um, and he's, he's like going around, he's three, but he's like taking photos of like just really funny stuff. Like we asked him to take something. What do you say? Um, asked him to, uh, take a photo of uh, something Brown and he took a photo of his knees because they got like suntanned. It's hilarious. So he just came back with his knees. Like he's, um, he's going taking photos and I'm thinking to myself, I could give you a camera and just get you to film me. Like if I needed some extra hands, like you're <laughs> almost getting that old now where you could do that for me. Um, but like, no, I think, I think genuinely in a couple of years he would actually be. Able yeah. To so do like that. for giving people more than just being able to film them, is what it is about because you have to differentiate between the need and the want like this is this is why this is why you should have me versus having your five-year-old kid hold a camera for example i know i know you get then, what i mean by that no 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 definitely and i think there's there's definitely for obvious reasons going to be a quality yes. difference but also if you can add extra value and make it feel effortless to to create video content then you're then you're then you're you know, in my experience, be definitely hired back yeah. in, in, in that respect, you know. Um, and also, I think eventually you'll develop a kind of, in some ways, a friend and client relationship in the respect to, of course, when there's, you know, serious talks about money and business and this and that, that's a client conversation. But you'll also have conversations, how are the kids? How are the wife? How's the weather? How's your weekend? You know, and you'll become a lot closer to it. Like, for example, a lot of my clients I'm very close to, right? I and mean, that's partly because, I'm going to be, in most cases, they need to be comfortable around mm. me because if I'm going to be filming them, like, for example, if we, like, in a theoretical scenario where I was following you around all the time, you'd have to be comfortable around me if I'm following mm. you around you all the time. I was just like, who's this guy, this random guy fil walking around filming me, you know what I mean? Um, so, so it's one of those things where you also have to sort of balance that um, kind of relationship and, and then understand, you know, when is it specifically appropriate where the boundaries are in that in those relationships as well because i think that that's really important for the client but also for you to know where those boundaries are but also to because it, it's it's really good when you're in a situation where you feel like you should always be and i always try and be in a position where if i think we can do something better but it's not necessarily something you've told me so you might say oh we're trying to do it this way and i'll go i appreciate that but have you thought about doing it this way and here's yeah. why mm. And then hopefully we'll be in a position where I can feel comfortable to do that. And you'll go, that's a really cool idea or that's a really bad idea. And here's why I don't yeah. like it. You got to have it. Right? You got to have that open you creativity. Know, and, you know, and be able to bounce off each other in that respect. And this is kind of what it goes, goes back to what I was saying before about eventually it doesn't have to happen overnight, but eventually it should be to the point where whoever, whatever videographer you're going to work with will fire you. Yes. Up will get you excited to to for the content that you're producing or the or the whatever it you know whatever it may be that you're producing in Definitely. that respect um as as well great um I, that was kind of everything i wanted to discuss today but um feel free to uh, mention anything that you uh, would like to plug or would like to talk about in any more depth if there's anything you may have thought of or well no i mean i'm i'm interested to know from you like what got you into this what was it that sparked your enthusiasm to be a videographer? Um, okay. That there's there's a short answer and there's a long answer. Um, short answer, I've basically created videos forever. Um I'm I'm twenty two, twenty three this year. Um, and from the age of twelve or thirteen I've been creating video content in one way or another. What was the tech like when you were twelve? Um terrible. Uh <laughs> 
Hang on. So you you're 22. So 10 years ago. So I, hang on. Nah, you there was fa- there was a fair amount around but, no, 10 no, years no, ago. There was, but but what I mean by that. What were you using? What were you filming? The on thing was at 12. What I'm doing now was not what I was filming then, because my what were you doing? My then? background is in game development originally. That's that's where I okay. came from. So that's my background for a I want to say eight to nine years. I filmed gaming content related, so using something. So that's like streaming the. Yeah. So, so it's, it's filming yeah. the game and then filming reactions. So okay. it can be anything from yeah, yeah. a how-to in the game to a let's play of the game. Oh, to, you know, I, I wish I lived through that. Um, and uh, I wish I had and, that. You know, doing and doing that, and that's what I grew up with. That's you know, and that's yeah, and that's why I've been able to, and that's where I learned the basics of editing. That's where I learned okay. how to come over on camera, etc. Yeah. And it was horrible, right? If you want to hear what I sounded like when I was twelve, those videos still <laughs> exist. Right, um, that's cool. But, that's cool. But you know, for me, it, it, it was the kind of it developed the backbone to do, to, for, to allow me to do what I do now. You know, um, yeah, yeah, good for you. Man. You know, I didn't have to be in this situation where I was like, how do I know how to how do I know how to video edit from a basic perspective, from when I switched to doing more commercial based filming because I had been editing for six, seven, eight years. You know. For me, it was just yeah. then just, I got to a point with gaming. The reason why I stopped was because I got to a point with gaming where I grew up to the ceiling of where gaming could take me. So okay. I was like, right, okay, what do I want to do now that I continue to grow creatively with? And then around sure. the same time, I got into photography and then one thing led to another. And then I ended up becoming a videographer more commercially, you know? Okay. Um, and then I started filming events, started filming business videos, started filming music videos, just just literally just reached out to people and just go, I want to film shit. I just want to make cool shit. Yeah, nice. It was never, oh, I can make money from this. That happened. It was like, there was yeah. a point, a turning point where it was like, wait, you're going to pay me to fuck around with the camera? Hold on. What? Because that's basically what I do, right? But but it's, it it's in some ways it is and it isn't that, right? Because for me, in my head, it's just me fucking around with the camera. But in in marketing terminology, it's me helping to amplify what you're trying to say and how to do yeah. that. At the end of the day, if you talk to every videographer unofficially, they'll just say they're fucking around with the camera. That's all they do. That's literally all they're doing, and they're just they're just yeah. having fun, and it's, and, and, it's and, we cool. get, and we get to get paid for it, which is great, and 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 which allows you to be able to really really focus in on getting better at that craft as well, because you because mm. you can literally do it all the time, um, and mm-hmm. it comes back to what you were saying earlier about finding that thing that you're passionate about. You know, I've always wanted to work for myself. I never knew what that was. Mm-hmm. Back then, I had no idea. I just like I want to work for myself, right? Okay, I want to work for myself, but I never knew what that meant. You know, yeah, I never yeah. knew what that was going to be. <laughs> and then I was like, well, what, what, what would I do for free, or what would I do for one pound, right? And I was like, well, I've been creating video content for years and years and years and years and years, basically making no money, um, mm-hmm. and I love it. So there's a, there's a gap in this market, especially in Salisbury where there wasn't many people doing event videos, many, many people doing business videos. So I was like, well, I can't do it right now, 100%, like very well, but give me a year yeah. and a half, then sure. You know? Oh, good. Um, good for so you. So that's, that's, that's what I did. That was that was three, just, uh, yeah, just over three years ago now. Yeah. So, and then... That's and cool. Then, that's cool. And then one thing led to another, and now I've been... And, and now I'm just kind of soldiering on and following what my passions are and, you know, a passion that I've been, as I say, doing during lockdown has been podcasting, you know, I, yeah. I'm really getting into audio content, um, specifically I'm really flexing the muscles of, of my interview styles as well, because going back to, yeah, you're asking great questions, you know, going back to having to wear multiple hats. I find when I do interviews with clients, I'm also the interviewer. Of course. Right? Yeah. So makes sense. And, and that will only, that will only happen more because you will want as minimum people in the room as possible, you know, post COVID. You know, in most cases, sure. for a, for a long time, I can imagine you won't want as many people in the room. So I was like, right, how am I going to use this time effectively to grow the skill sets which I have? And one of them needs to, that I felt I needed to improve on was interviewing people and actually grilling people. Mm. Um, you know, um, so I just was like, right, let's start a podcast and that's that. Let's let's you know, do it in the respective. It's going to be an interview podcast, and we bounce off each other and we see what goes on that. And I, you know, I. I hope I'm getting better at it. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but, um, you know, I seem to be, people have been saying, oh, you're good at interviewing and, and you seem to enjoy yourself and you seem to enjoy doing it. People are enjoying the podcast content. So for me, that's, that's a win-win. Yeah. Know? Um, and that, you know, cause I love doing it. So 
people are watching it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge believer in just giving things a go that you get pulled towards. You know, it's great to hear you saying all that stuff and just something curious that you might be interested in. When I was um, given my first camera, I got a camera for my 14th birthday, mm. a video camera. And I remember the day, it was, oh, it was the best because I loved the the TV program Jackass. Mm. Right? The, do you know Jackass? Yeah. I don't know. You're, yeah, I haven't seen it in a very... I have, you're I a bit younger than me, time. so I, I didn't realise um, the difference in our age, 10 years. So when um, when we were at school, when I was at school, secondary school, Jackass just came out and it was like on MTV and you had to tune in like at like 11pm and it was a half an hour show of people just doing like crazy stuff, stunts and mucking around. And me and a group of friends were like, well, this is amazing. So I was the creative one I, and the one that was kind of the the brains behind the organization, so to speak, and got this camera for my birthday and I would take it to school with me and I was filming funny little things in school and then we would jump off sheds and we'd be like dressing up weird and skating. And then um, once a week, everyone used to come around my house and watch the edit. And this was like, I, I swear, like it's cool having this chat with you because you'll get it. But I always joke around with people and say, Shh, if I'd have... If I'd have kept that up, but obviously I don't regret anything because I was into sport and it took me on different tangents. But if I'd have kept that up through just even a year longer, YouTube came out and it would have just been like awesome because I would have put all that stuff on YouTube and it would be there still now. But um, And who knows what would have happened. But obviously it, it didn't transpire that way. But I've always, always, always been into filming stuff since 14 uh, and I joke around as well and saying that I was doing selfies before selfies were a thing because phones only had cameras on one side so you had to just sort of guess that you were seeing yourself when you were filming it and and I was doing videos and I have a few like that actually in the archives but I love what you do um videography I think it's a, an amazing creative way of telling stories and telling stories is what we've done for thousands of years mate no I think it's a very important um job as well to be done because especially now for example we will be able to look back on everything that people did during you know lockdown those who did film stuff because they it sits there it you know what i say in a video it's written in ink is it you know is it mortified in that video right you know for example like yeah. especially as i've sort of tailored the podcast and by no means does that mean the future podcast episodes will will be tailored around how that people are dealing with covid but at the moment covid course, is, yeah. is is something very that i want to try and because i think there's a lot of value in how certain people are dealing with it or not dealing with it you know or, or what challenges yep. they're looking at and how do they overcome this change i think there's a lot of value there so that's why i'm yep. looking at really for the podcast at the moment really talking about those but there'll be a point where i say well i think i've exhausted that and also yeah, i hear you mate. And, and also i think there'll be a point in the world where the next set of problems will be more important and will be more relevant. I think there's going to be more value in, in, in those answers. So that's when I'll pivot where the, where the podcast. That's the great thing about a is. podcast though. It's just a running commentary of whatever you're up to. That's how I see it. And, and how you can bring value with the things that you're into. My podcast is on 110 episodes now. And you know, cause you were there yesterday in the bunker talk session. I've been putting the bunker talk sessions up and they're, they're COVID based narrative. But I actually said last night that I said, guys, I'm just letting you know that I'm going to be changing the narrative on these bunker talk sessions. I'll still be keeping them going, but I'm going to be mixing up a bit and not just talking about that. Exactly what you've just said. And if you go back to the earlier episodes on my podcast, they're all about fitness. But I'm not going to take them off, you know, because the podcast, which I, I changed the name of it, is called Tommy G Talk. So it's what everyone talks about. It's just an archive at the end of the day, just like all the other stuff we talked about. It's It's legacy. It's it's check it out. This is what we said in 2017. Yeah. You know? These are our opinions. This is what we, we cared about. And, and this is what we talked about yeah. in the same way that what we're talking about now, what we care about now and is, is how are people dealing with COVID? How are people dealing with things being shut down? How are businesses surviving? Yeah. Because I think that if you, for people who, for example, may be in school now, but then, you know, hopefully post COVID and when we're out of the woods with that completely, then go into a kind of entrepreneurial kind of, oh, I really want to do this. They'll go, how did people deal with the crisis that we just went through from a business perspective? And then they're like, right, okay, so I need to consume some content that was created during that. 
And to be honest, from yeah. what I'm seeing, there's not as much. So from, from my perspective, it's going to allow me to leverage it saying, well, I haven't stopped creating even though the world was on fire. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. um, <laughs> Yeah, because for me, I think it's very important to still document what's happening, right? Especially now, especially how people are feeling now, because how people are feeling today will be polar opposite to possibly how you feel tomorrow, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the same repeated all the way through, you know. Um, and as we go out into the next stage of COVID, whatever that looks like, you know, with things starting to open back up and this and that and this and that, you know, and. I think it's going to be very important to, because you don't necessarily know what your opinions were or thought what your opinions were and you don't, and your memory is always kind of a bit hit or miss sometimes when you look back. So I think it's very important to have a concrete on this day at this time, this is how I felt. Yes. Right? Um, just for your own like curiosity mixed with sanity, I think as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think it could also help a lot of people to understand how like for example if when i have kids if i have kids you know they'll go well what did you do during covid well if you want to know yeah here's 26 episodes of a podcast that i started <laughs> or or here's what's a podcast dad <laughs> you know you know or etc you know there's because yeah and the reason why i i kind of preach you know people should be doing internet content is because this content if you put in the time now to create it it will live online for as long as you allow it to live online right yeah um, obviously there's going to be situations where things will get removed or whatever, but like in the basic level or the base level, a video that I made three years ago still exists and still, yes. uh, and the re and the content is still pretty relevant in the respect to what I was talking about. Right. So me putting in that time three years ago is still very beneficial because it means I don't mm -hmm. have to revisit that topic unless I want to. Right. Because if I get a, if I get a question about something specific, like, Oh, um, for example, like, uh, an example from this podcast is early, you know, or oh, what does legacy mean? Okay. Well, let me, let me ch link you a podcast where conveniently enough, we talk mm. about legacy, right? Yeah. Um, because then I don't have to explain it or you don't have to explain it or et cetera, you know? Um, and I think that's, I think that's very important. Now there's obviously going to be things where, you know, in year, in three, four years, you might go, this is now my understanding of legacy and that might've changed, but that's fine you know yes um you know it could be anything else i just use legacy as an easy example um yeah no you know yeah i understand um yeah in that respect but i think i, I think that's why people should start creating content in a, in a simple in a simple terminology um because yeah. it allows you to document the process of you building what you're trying to build mm -hmm. you know Definitely. And I think that's a story which a lot of people can get behind and a lot of people will get behind and it also allows you to be more person personal um yeah you know, in that respect you know people want to connect with people you know mm -hmm. i know oh i'm gonna buy from this person because i know the person yeah. right yes they sell a service or a trade but i actually know the human being who's actually going to be doing it or the set of human mm -hmm. beings is going to be doing it and i think that's really important and eventually you'll develop that kind of trust with those people as well um this might necessarily not be a from a client to a consumer perspective, but it also might be a customer to a, uh, you know, a service provider or whatever it may be, you know, there's, there's lots of crossover there. And I think that's something which when people realize the role, which content plays in that, I think it's only going to be beneficial for content creators who establish themselves as the person to go to. Go to girl. Yeah. Go to girl or guy. You know, yeah. They'll be very, very successful because the, the 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 industry overall is slowly especially now it kind of got kicked by covid a little bit but it was already starting to turn itself kind of mm. towards digital content and digital marketing and digital social media marketing and, and, and that kind of thing that was it was where the industry was going it was going there slowly mm. and the people who adopt it early will be ahead of the game you know and especially and as i say if you can establish yourself as a content career that doesn't necessarily specialize in, you know, fitness videos. You can go that right if you want to, but also you need to know how to pivot if you are just fitness videos, because in a time like COVID where you can't do fitness videos, yeah. you need a way to still make money, you know? So what videos are really, really popular right now? Can you do those? That's why I've never, because there's a debate in the filmmaking community about 
should you niche down and become an absolute expert in like a wedding film, for example, mm-hmm. or in commercials or in fitness videos or et cetera. And then there's the other side of the coin that says you should be good at v- creating video content, but not necessarily niche down. And I think it, in reality, it actually comes down to, do you want to niche down firstly? Yeah. And secondly, is that industry going to exist no matter what happens in the world? Yeah. Because people have been saying for years, people get married, whatever happens. Well, COVID's come around and weddings are kind of challenging <laughs> to have right now. Um, yeah. You know, so, so <laughs> it's this kind of balancing. But I think personally, for me, it's been, I don't necessarily want to get caught into a kind of situation where it's, I'm only going to make music videos. I could probably make yeah. more money if I said I'm only going to make music videos, but I would hate making music videos. To be honest, yes. <laughs> after two months of making music videos, I'd hate making music videos. So sure. for me, it's always been sort of how can I take on a project that I'm going to grow from, but also yeah. that I can grow from creatively in the respect to it might be because, yeah. you know, I, I might do a music video that I learn a technique in or try a technique in that I think really, really works that I can then take into something else that I may do, cool. you know, in that respect. I think there's yeah. lots of crossover in uh, going back to what you were saying earlier about, oh, I've built this business building blocks of that business, no matter whether it's a gym or a, a consulting service, is going to be the same. Yeah. You know, and so you know what those building blocks are. So when it comes mm. to building a digital marketing agency, you already have half the work done. Yeah. Because you already know you know what you know what works and you know what doesn't because you've but uh, and that's why I think fail failing is not necessarily a bad thing. As long as you learn mm. from the failures. As like, long as there's a lesson. You know, as long as you learn. Well, there's always a lesson. We need to accept that lesson and the learning involved. Yeah. And also accept that you're never going to know all of it, I think is also really mm. important. And, uh, and know you're, yeah, you can be an expert and I can be more, you know, I, like for example, I can be more of an expert in regards to how to create a video than you are. But that mm. by no means does means, by no means does that mean I have nothing else to learn in video yeah, or, yeah. or et cetera, you know? Yeah. Um, because because the moment the moment you think you know it all, mate, it's the moment you you stop. Yeah, and and the and and the industries don't stop. That's the that's the thing. So you have to continuously yeah. be moving forward. And if you're trying to get into the industry that you may not be in for a period of time, you have to be moving faster than everyone else because you have you have so yeah. much more ground to catch. You know, in, yeah. in that respect, from from how I'm seeing it and how I started my business anyway was how am I going to, you know run faster than my competition because i'm two years three years four years five years behind them yeah now there's a uh, also then it comes back to the bait of work-life balance which is an entire topic all on its own but i also think that if you can work hard and smart then you'll be able to in some ways outpace your competition as well um to be mm-hmm. able to you know, really sm- make that gap a lot smaller if that gap exists but if you're quote unquote, what you feel is the leader in the market of what you do, you'll be able to make that gap that someone who's trying to chase you would have a lot harder time being able to chase you because the, yeah. the gap's yeah. going to be a lot larger um, mm. in that respect as well. And that's what I've been personally focusing on as as well um, because from what I've Good. seen at least, there's not many people, if any, that do what I do specifically in Salisbury. So... I've Good. been like, right, okay, that's fine. But that doesn't mean tomorrow someone isn't going to go, that seems like a fun idea. I'm going to start doing it. Um, and then they're going to have, but th- then I'm going to be like, right, am I, how are they going to, how much ground do they have to cover before they're right behind me? Mm. So I've been trying yeah, to yeah. push forward continuously Good. still so that I know that if anyone does start, they've they've got a huge amount of ground to cover. And, and, and sure. it's, it's going to be this balancing out between you know, how fast can I move and how fast can I pivot to allow me to increase that distance as well? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, is there anything else that you were thinking of? or could, could No, I mean, I'm, I think it's been great. We've had a great chat. We've covered a lot of different things. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value in the, this episode. You know, I think that um, just on any note from me, I think that anyone who's looking to start creating content, you should think about how you can add value to the small amount of people listening whenever you start because everyone starts with three people mm. listening um the majority of the time it's you your mom and a friend 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with that, but still, your at your core reason to why you create the content should be you're adding a form of value. So that might be entertainment yes. value, that might be educational value, that might be you know some other the other form of value, but some some form of value. Um, you know, in that respect, and that's why I think that it's really important um to have that as a core reason why you create any content um especially if you're looking to scale that content up um as well so those who may not know of you where can uh they find more of you and and and, and that kind of thing and interact with you and, and if they were looking for digital marketing services or life coaching services or just to see the ted talk or etc um in that respect yeah cool so i mean easy way to to lay that out would be with a name like mine, whatever social media platform you type it into, you'll find me. So at Tommy Gentleman is usually the handle, uh, certainly on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, but anywhere that you are and anywhere that you'd prefer to talk or connect, that's where to find me, whatever suits you best. And in terms of digital marketing, go to www.tommyg.biz, tommyg.biz and get on the newsletter. Um, talking about value, I just send out a newsletter once a week uh, with some value. Sometimes it's to do with content creation. Sometimes it's to do with how to optimize the services and the protocols and processes in your business. Sometimes it's just to do with you as the business owner, as the human being, like we talked about earlier. So that's tommyg.biz to get on the newsletter. And um, yeah, anytime anyone wants to go a bit deeper into the, the TEDx talk, just go on to YouTube and type my name in and you and then tedx and you'll see it good right and i would recommend Sweet. anyone that is actually interested on in what tommy was talking about earlier about legacy to watch that talk um because there's a lot Thank of you. there is a lot of value in that talk and i think it's a very powerful message and that's why i wanted to briefly bring it up here sure um good for, for people who, who who may um you know relate to that story or, or can take value from that story as well so thank you for coming on uh, Tommy and it was really great thank you so to much you. for having me and uh, yeah I'm sure there'll be other crossover in the future as well um, you know they will. They um, will. in the future as well and glad to hear you survived the lion I believe uh, <laughs> as, your, as, yes. as your chat put it yesterday um, yes um, in a, still standing in that respect. Mate. so, so yeah. yeah stay well and um, I'm sure as I say there'll be definitely um, crossover in the future Thank you so much, guys, for getting to this far into the video. I hope you guys took value from that interview and enjoyed mine and Tommy's chat. Um, we talked about a lot, I know, but uh, I think there was a lot of value in this episode. And I really, really personally enjoyed uh, re-listening to that interview and also, obviously, having the chat um, a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago. But uh, I am going to have a brand new episode for you guys with a brand new or a um, new person and a new business owner to talk about how she's been dealing with COVID in a um, more detailed basis and uh, how her business has been affected. So that's going to be very fun and very, very interesting. That'll be out on next Monday at 6 p.m. if you are interested. So thank you so much for joining me once again this week. I'll see you on Wednesday for a brand new YouTube video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you very, very soon. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, I'll see you very, very soon.